When was the first time you remember listening to metal music? I got it from my aunt. Uh, I, I got the whole Kiss collection when I was seven years old. Uh, every album until yeah, then at that point. And uh, Black Sabbath, uh, UFO, uh, Deep Purple. So maybe four years old, something like that. And then I, I started to. I still have those albums today, so I, I keep kept collecting. So uh, yeah, I got it with a with a mother's milk, so to speak. Yeah. And what made you become a vocalist? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I really uh, I've tried to reflect on that several times. I have no clue. It makes no sense at all. You know, kind of a love hate thing. But I I think I was uh, no. But I thought it was cool, of course, to be to, you know want to watch Kiss alive albums. And, you know, was some some from some other world. Um, so uh, I guess you wanted to be part of that, and also. I was very fond of lyrics, so I started a lot about writing and stuff, and then started to sing in punk bands, and Ramones covers and so on, and then it became death metal, and then yeah, black metal, trash metal, death stars, and so on. Yeah, so it's been a very, very varied kind of bands. So yeah. when you started singing, were you trying to imitate other vocalists, or were you already trying to find your own voice? No, but the thing was, it was different in different bands, of course. Uh, but with Death Stars, uh, yeah, but it was a joke from the beginning uh, because I was singing in a totally different way on the first sketches. And then it was like, oh, what, what, what kind of vocals should we have? And then I was just imitating like a, a joke for our drummer at that point, Bone, uh, uh, Carl McCoy from Fields of the Nephilim. I said, my child. And, oh, yeah, do like that, do like that. And then we kept, just kept that kind of vocal. But I think it's, it's a bit different today, but yeah, you still, that's the foundation of, uh, of the vocal theme, so to speak. Yeah. When did you start your journey as a vocalist in a band? Uh, you mentioned that you played like some Ramones and stuff yeah. like that. But uh, was like Brand the first time playing your own material? Brand, yeah, that was uh, like a death metal, black metal project. No, 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 no. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, before that I was in punk bands, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Brand was, uh, yes, yeah, sort of a project. We had a, a duo, just. Uh, but after that, then I con uh, me and Emil Nightmare became very good friends. So we've been since childhoods, but but we started writing music together at that point, 92 maybe, and then we released the first album in 93, I think. Yeah. So we've been doing music for over 30 years, just me and him. That was, I think, with the Nightmare. That was when it really like we we yeah, it became more professional, so to speak. And while singing like punk and death metal, how long did it take to find the correct technique to sing? I, I, I forgot how, to, how you do this. I can't sing death metal anymore. I, I have no clue, because I listen sometimes to the old albums and fuck, it sounds really good, but I can't do it. I, can't, I have no clue, so <laughs> I lost the technique. <laughs> I've found some other ways now. I don't think about it at all, of course. But I, I can't sing like I did back then that the growling, growling stuff. So, so uh, and I never warm up or anything. So, uh, uh, but it's more like, uh, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's, it's a very natural thing, kind of, yeah. And when did you become interested in face painting? And what were the references for you to create your own look? But there was Kiss, of course, as I, every other band, it was Kiss. And uh, all those bands that were a bit yeah, had that kind of visual aspect to it because that starts, and also the yeah, if we're talking about that starts, it's just like it makes sense that it should be a visual part of it since the music is so visual and bombastic kind of. So it would be weird to stand there in Nirvana t-shirts and and, and colorful clothes and play this. So uh, so it's just an extension of the music. Kind of. And what kind of memories do you have of recording your first songs in the studio? What kind of vocal experience was it? Yeah, I think the first, uh, maybe, so, yeah, of course we did demos and stuff. I think it was pretty uh, nerve-wracking at that point. Yeah, the first album we recorded in one day. <laughs> with this sort of, So that was, I think it was like one take for three songs or something. CD, it was a mini CD. So that was a pr pretty... Uh, easy going kind of you just did it and then that's it so 
Um, so it's very different from nowadays when we almost write the songs in the studio. So. And what kind of memories do you have when you, it comes to the first tour you ever did? How was it for your voice? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first European tour we did was with uh, Swordmaster. It was us, uh, Dark Tranquility, Enslaved, and so on. And uh, it was just party. And it was horrible. <laughs> no sleep, just drinking. <laughs> that was for three weeks. That's what I can remember about the first time being on tour. I was like 17 or something. So, so yeah, no quality at all. But uh, I don't think I had any problems with the... With a screaming technique at that point. Today I wouldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do it for one, two days. I think without totally destroying my voice, since I don't know how you do it. And in the early 2000s, how was this transition from growling vocals of black metal to the cleaner vocals of industrial metal, as you yeah. mentioned in the beginning? It was weird because I wrote songs in a much more based up on rhythm before, and when I started to write songs for Death Stars, I kept that kind of rhythm and I had to adjust that uh, uh, after a while so it was more about the melodies and so on so but the rhythm has always been very important but but yeah it was a huge uh, huge uh, difference uh, back then to to uh, yeah to find a new kind of formula on how to do it so yeah, it was weird but uh, and, and Death Stars was just an experiment, of course, and now we are here 20 years later, which, which is we I never thought that, you know, but um, but it's fun, you know, it's uh, rewarding in some kind of ways. So. I like it. Uh, Death Stars is also known for its lyrics and visuals. What type of lyricists and fashion icons were a source of inspiration to create with pleasure? No, but I think it was very much about Central and Eastern Europe and a uh, European kind of aesthetics. I was very much into Alexander Rodchenko, the kind of illustrations. Also, uh, yeah, like Bulgakov and those kind of writers. And uh, I was very fond of that. You know, when other bands tend to look at America and the rock and roll scene there, we kind of adapted that to, to be just European. And, yeah, it's the European aesthetics and and uh, institutions and writers and so on. So I think that has inspired me a lot. And also it's just about our lives. We don't write about fiction or anything. So it's just about fucked up things that happens to us, basically. Yeah. And when you are on stage, do you also take on the persona of a pleasure like a method actor? Nah, I don't think so. It's, uh, I live in some kind of symbiosis, so it's pretty much the same guy. Uh, so uh, I don't think about it like that, or at all, actually. You have released many records with Swordmasters and Death Stars. Are there any albums you can point to where you see yourself making big steps as a vocalist? Swordmaster, Moribund Transgoria. I love that album. I think that is the best album I've done actually <laughs> but then i really uh, yeah of course like this last uh, death stars album and uh, and termination bliss um i think that perfect cult the album before this was a bit too dark maybe uh, even for you know it's, it's it's hard to grasp even for me it was kind of that was uh, so the, yeah this one was a bit more outgoing so i would say uh, yeah, Termination Bliss, Moribund Transgoria, and maybe this last one then. Uh, everything Destroys You. Yeah, on Everything Destroys You, is there anything new that you tried vocally on the record? Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing, yeah. <laughs> the thing is that when we, we write so many songs, me and Emil, uh, so maybe like 5% is on the album. But so a lot of songs where I do sing differently or do different arrangements, it, it can be a really good song. But after you know, after a while, we we just like this doesn't sound like Dead Stars. So that kind of when we take a step at a, another direction, it doesn't feel like us. So of course, I've yeah I've done different things, but then it's just not the same band. So we're not bold enough, I guess, to to. To take that step we'll see in the future yeah you said that you don't have any kind of warm-up routine but are there any foods or drinks that you would like to avoid before the show 
that you feel affect your voice in some way? No. <laughs> no, I have no problem at all with anything actually. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> and what was your parents' reaction when they realized you were singing a metal band? They hate it. Yeah, they really hate it. And they've always been is not fond of me being playing music at all. Yeah. Uh, but I guess when yeah, since I was so in, into, you know, those metal and rock bands when I was a kid, I was just sitting with the headphones listening day in, day out and day in. Um, I guess it's kind of logic, but they they never been supportive at all. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, if your parents hate it, it's good, you know, <laughs> then you stick with it. Something you would like to say to a young metal vocalist who is starting their journey? Well, don't. <laughs> Maybe don't do it. But if you have to do it, then you... You know, it, it, it takes so much... I'm thinking about writing the songs, but as a vocalist, I don't know, I don't have... I would like to get some advice, not give any, so I don't know. <laughs>